Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a first trimester ultrasound exam together. So let's start right away. I'll apply a little bit of gel. The gel has been warmed up by the machine and we'll start by adjusting and selecting the high frequency probe. And we have a set of presets already available on the machine. So I'll select a first trimester preset. So here we go. I'll make sure I'm holding the probe in the right direction with the small bar that allows me to locate the left side of the probe on my screen. Then I'll do an initial scan. This scan allows me to see the boundaries of the uterus. So you see, I'll go from bottom to top and then I'll come across the uterus and I'll be able to adjust the depth of the area of interest. So here I've reduced the depth what interests me namely the gestational sac with the embryo is well positioned in the center of my screen. Then for better visibility I'm going to increase the zoom. Here I can adjust the zoom which will allow me to have better resolution on the images I'll be studying. So let's go. I'm going to explore the entire cavity to check the number of embryos. When we're sure about it, obviously there's only one embryo, and of course, I take advantage of the scan to check for the presence of cardiac activity, which you can see very well. On M-mode Doppler, we can see the cardiac activity of this baby very clearly. We can also let the patient listen to it because it's quite an emotional moment. This first ultrasound is often the first meeting of the parents with the baby. This baby, as you can see, moves a lot. At this early stage, I don't use Doppler since it releases some heat, and we want to avoid any potential side effects on the embryo. Now, once we've passed this trimester here, there is no problem in using it. Now that I've done that, I've seen that there is a pregnancy well located in the uterus. I've seen that it's monofetal, there's only one fetus. I've seen that it's progressing well. I will now start my morphological examination. To start my morphological examination, I will follow an order that seems easier to me, which is to start from the top and scan down the fetus. I'll begin with the cephalic pole. Here, I'm at the level of the cephalic pole and I'm performing a transverse section of the cephalic pole. So, what can I see at the level of the head? Firstly, I'll be able to explore the contours of the calvarium that you see here. So you can see we have the contours of the bony skull and they're well defined. We can adjust the depth which allows us to see the front or the back better. Since everything that will be on the tangential part of the ultrasound beam will be a little more difficult to explore. Hence the interest in rotating your ultrasound probe to visualize the entirety of the contours of the calvarium. During my examination, I make sure to always stay centered to ensure an optimal image. So I'm going to measure the biparietal diameter. To measure the biparietal diameter, I take this transverse image and try to align the midline as horizontally as possible. For example, here I have a midline that is not perfectly horizontal, so I'll turn a little, and then I'll try to align it more horizontally to be in an optimal location for measuring this biparietal diameter. So here I'll be able to measure the biparietal diameter, which corresponds to the largest diameter I can measure. So I'll measure it here by positioning my calipers and then I'll go up to there. I measure the biparietal diameter and I take the opportunity to explore the midline, which is continuous, starting from the back here and going to the front. Why do I check this? Because I'm going to rule out the diagnosis of holoprosencephaly. Since holoprosencephaly creates a single cavity in this alobar form. And here I see that I have a midline with a good separation between the two hemispheres. I see the poroid plexuses on each side here, and I see the thalami in the middle, which are right here. Here is the posterior fossa, which we can, can't easily examine in the first trimester. So I advise you not delve into it. But we already have the three important elements, the contours of the skull, the biparietal diameter, and the midline. 
In the examination of the cephalic pole, this is what we need to make sure of. I continue my examination. I'm going to gradually move inferiorly, and this will allow me to explore the fetus's face. What do we see here? For that, I lower my probe and try to position myself while the baby moves. We're constantly repositioning a nut on the probe because obviously we must. We will be able to visualize the orbits. Here's one and here's the other. Here you can even see the lens. So once I check that there are lenses, I can check that there are indeed two eyes and we also see here the earbuds. So you see one ear here and the other here. At this stage of pregnancy, we already have some important information about the face. After that, we can explore the face in the sagittal plane, which allows us to look at the profile of this baby. You see the profile here. I've turned my probe 90 degrees, and I see the profile with the forehead, nose, mouth, and chin. So when I'm perpendicular to the nasal bones, I can highlight them. You can see the nasal bones are here, but beware, in an ultrasound where you're more centered on the nuchal translucency, if your ultrasound beam is perpendicular to the neck, it is not perpendicular to the nasal bones, which are not quite in the same plane. You see that the nasal bones are not parallel to the nuchal translucency. So if you want to see the nasal bones you well, should try to have the nasal bones as perpendicular as possible to your ultrasound beam. So here we see that the nasal bones are well present. We also have the palate here. We have a nice little profile that also gives us quite a bit of information. There you go. The more I tilt, the more I'll be able to easily visualize the nasal bones. I continue. During the examination last time when we did the course, we also talked about the intracranial translucency and the spine. Here you see, when we do the sagittal section, we can explore the spine. We would have to wait for the fetus to shift a little to check the continuity of the skin on the back. You know that the diagnosis of spina bifida is a diagnosis that is made more often in the second trimester. Hence the possibility of examining the intracranial nuchal translucency that you see here. Here we know that it reduces the risk of neural tube closure abnormalities. Here, we're more on the brainstem, and the intracranial translucency part is here. So I'm going to continue looking at the spine, and for that, I wait for the fetus to move a little. There you go. You see, he's making little spontaneous movements that allow me to look better at the spine. Well, obviously, this baby is squirming in all directions because he's in great shape, and there you go. We have to wait a little so we have some vertebrae that we can follow here, and if we want to examine the skin on the back, we'll wait for him to move again, like he did earlier, to lift the bottom of his buttocks. I'm bothering him a little to see if he's willing to move, and otherwise it's a matter of patience between him and me to see who's the most patient of the two but I normally win. After a while, it happens during an examination that you can't see everything at the same time. Otherwise, you have to know how to come back a little later. That is to say, you progress in your examination, you follow a slightly different order, and then after a while, you end up seeing what you want in a relatively acceptable time. Okay, so we'll continue my examination. We said that we were following an order from top to bottom, now I'm going to continue to descend and I'm going to reach the thorax. So you see, at the level of the thorax, we have the lung fields, which you see here are homogeneous, and then we have the heart, and we will uh, rather use a heart mode to have a better resolution on the heart. I'm going to adjust again, like every time, I'm going to increase the zoom. I'm going to also adjust my depth. There you go. And then you see that I'm going to play a little bit on the gain to, to optimize the image. So here we're in good condition. We see the orientation of the heart, which has a tip that is towards the left. And then you see the four cardiac chambers with the two ventricles and the two atria. 
it's sometimes easier to see one in motion. We know we have these four cavities and we're not obligated to go further when we're in the first trimester.